What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Just want to give you guys a bit more information about personally what I'm doing. Um, if you guys haven't seen my community post or my tweets over on Twitter, I actually had contracted COVID uh, not that long ago. So I've been dealing with that over the past week or so. So apologies for no videos, but obviously it was for a very good reason. So just trying to recover from that. I'm still not 100%, but hey, we're getting through it. Now today, I want to talk about this data download that the input a brand new Pirate Rumble Merge Celebration Sugo Fest. So the big thing about this Sugo Fest is that it entails all of the previous Pirate Rumble characters that hadn't arrived on Global yet. And uh, we'll go through all of those in this video today. But as for when this banner goes live, it goes live on January 9th, 1900 PST time. So it's going to be starting in a couple days time. We probably should get the news for it tomorrow as of this video going live, which will give us a bit more information most likely in terms of like what legends are going to be available here. And um, one thing that's kind of like a notable thing about this banner is that uh, PVP legend Enel and Kizaru are not like shown on this banner artwork. So I hope that's just a visual thing. I hope that they're still available to be pulled. So for those people that don't don't have those units you have a chance to get them personally i don't have kizara would love to have a just a slight chance at getting him as well as the brand new legend which is kuma which we will talk about in this video as well so let's just jump straight into it there's a lot of new characters to talk about but we need to talk about the actual steps here so we can see that the first one is a discounted multi at 30 rainbow gems we've got a, a rumble level three character uh, on the second step which is doesn't really matter because you know this can still be anything it just it means if it's got a rumble ability it, it'll be at level three it's nothing special the third multi does guarantee you a legend and if you do pull legend well you are going to pull legend but the legend that you do pull comes at level 5 special and rumble ability which doesn't matter that much because 10 golden rumble scrolls gets you to level 5 passive and level 5 special so it's basically like just getting a legend with 10 rumble scrolls already fed into it it's pretty pretty basic stuff uh the fourth one though is a limited pool pirate rumble sugo fest only character now that just means that it's a guaranteed rumble unit and that's basically it it's a limited pool now we don't know how limited that pool is and we will need to get more clarification on that once the actual banner information is given to us tomorrow uh, and then maybe it might not even tell us then we might have to wait until the rates uh, go live but then a guaranteed recommended unit on the fifth multi so that means you're guaranteed to get one of these characters on the banner artwork it is annoying that like character like shiryu and kuzan are here because they're just old units at this point like why are they even here would have much preferred if it was uh you know one of the pvp legends like whether it be kizaru or an L. I, I wish that those guys would have been featured instead, but it is what it is. Uh, and then after the fifth multi, you know, we've got kind of like other basic steps, you know, other special level three characters for the sixth and the seventh, another limited pool, Pyre Rumble character on the eighth, recommended on the ninth. And of course, it's just, you know, just cycling through that until it goes to the 13th. So Kuma actually is not guaranteed in the Sugo Fest. If I remember correctly, I think he actually was on Japan. So for those of you guys who were like super hardcore Kuma fans, Unfortunately, he's not going to be guaranteed on this banner. But let's actually talk about all the new characters because there are a lot of new characters to talk about. So let's just jump straight into it. We've got Arlong here, who is a strength powerhouse slasher. This is another PvP rare recruit character. I'm not going to talk about his regular abilities. We're only going to talk about what he does in PvP because that's what these characters are designed for. So his passive is going to give your strength teammates level 5 attack, level 5 speed, and for the first 40 seconds, your dex enemies will get level 6 speed down. It's fine it's nothing crazy though i mean level 5 attack and speed is pretty good for strength um disabling decks though doesn't really matter too much considering like strength already have everything in their arsenal to kind of debuff decks anyway so that's a bit of a weird one as for his special though, 27 countdown timer targets enemies in a large range for two times his attack and then strength teammates will get level 7 attack and level 3 defense for 20 seconds. That's a very good special. I mean, two times attack is pretty standard for most PvP rare recruits these days. 27 second CT is, is about fine. It's also about standard for these PvP rare recruit characters. I know that a couple of them actually are in like 25, 24 ish. So it is kind of annoying that he is at 27, but like strength have pretty good CT increases. So I'm not really too worried about that. That's a good special though i mean damage and then also buffs attack and defense i kind of wish it was the other way around where he buffed the attack and defense first so that he would get you know more damage from his special considering it is a higher cooldown so i guess it's respectable he still does a lot of damage and he helps out your strength team it's a pretty good unit the next character here is sturusen who is a psi slasher free spirit character and in, in his rumble abilities he gives your psi teammates level 5 speed and level 3 defense now that's not really like that useful 
in PvP, unfortunately. I guess on a defensive team, maybe, but let's see what his special does. 24 CT is pretty good. Three enemies for defense down level four, and then targets your side teammates for level six attack and level three defense. Um, that's pretty decent. Um, it, he's definitely more focused around debuffing, which of course he is a debuff style unit. He doesn't provide damage though, so I don't know how good that that actually is. This is the type of unit that you would probably want on your front line. This is not a bench unit. Bench units you want to be like your super hard hitters. Uh, this guy would definitely be a front line unit. Would I use him on a on a side team? No, personally I wouldn't. There's so many other better side units I would rather use over this guy. So I guess if you get him, he's fine, but he's not the best unit in the world. The next one, though, is going to be Smoothie. Now, I have seen a lot of JP players use this character, so I'm excited to see what this character actually does. So another Psy Slasher character. All the characters so far we've talked about have all been Slashers. That's crazy. Slasher Powerhouse. And her effect, let's have a look. In PvP, level 5 Rumble Ability... Level 7 attack and level 1 CT increase to your Psy characters. That's a pretty good passive. I mean, level 7 attack is pretty crazy with a, with a passive by itself. It's pretty good. And a 28 CT targets 3 enemies for 2.5 times her attack and then targets herself for 600 per interval auto healing for 20 seconds. This is really good. Um, I, I really like this unit. This is definitely a unit that you would probably put on your bench. Comes in late game. Level 7 attack up automatically given to herself. If you're running a Psy team, this is a really good Psy unit to bring on a uh, late game because obviously she'll get all of the buffs from your other Psy characters that are pa that are just active passively on the, on, the, on the field. So this is a really good, really, really good PvP unit. Um, 28 CT is obviously a little bit high, but of course you've got Characters like uh, uh, Wano Law, for example, on the uh, on the side team helps out a lot with CT. So, yeah, this is a really really good unit. I'm pretty impressed with this smoothie. Would love to get my hands on this unit. Next, we have Kobe, who is a strength free spirit fighter. Okay, pretty good. And let's have a look and see what he does. So, another strength unit in PvP, just strength and size everywhere. So, for his Rumble ability, level 5, is your strength teammates will get level 5 attack and level 2 CT increase. Very similar to the smoothie that we just had a look at, who give level 7 attack and 1 CT. So this is 5 attack and 2 CT. Pretty respectable, actually. It's a really good passive. And then 33 CT. That's a, that's a bit high. Uh, what is he? He is a supporter style unit. Okay. He targets your strength teammates for level 7 speed, level 7 attack, and level 3 CT increase. And it's all by varying times. And if your current team is 5 or less, target one teammate with high attack for 100% CT reduction. That's crazy. Okay, I understand why he's got a high CT. Because this is a very good support special. Because he, he's guaranteed to make one of your characters go to max CT immediately. But on top of that, for the next 15 seconds after this is launched... If you include his passive and his special, he grants level 5 CT up just with this unit. He also gives a lot of attack and a lot of speed. This is a pretty exceptional unit. Now, I don't know where I'd honestly want to put him. Would I put him on the bench or would I put him on the front line? That's interesting. I think because he does have CT increase with his passive... I wouldn't be I wouldn't be opposed to putting him on the on the front line, but at the same time, you can have him on the bench and come in late game and then automatically like special CT charge one of your other characters. The thing is though, 33 CT is very high for a bench unit, so take that as you will. This is a good unit though. I don't know if I would honestly use him on a strength team, considering the strength team's already pretty powerful right now. I don't know if this is a unit that they kind of need. But he's a pretty good PvP rare recruit nonetheless. Now, the last new PvP rare recruit that we need to talk about is Ohm. Now, I remember when this got announced on Japan, a lot of JP players were going crazy at how good this guy actually was. So he is an int cerebral slasher, another slasher, of course. And his passive is going to give your int characters level 6 health and level 5 attack. That's already very good. And for the first 40 seconds, your Psy enemies will get level 3 defense down. What a great passive. I mean, just running on an in team, very good against enemy Psy teams. Psy teams are one of the best teams in the game right now. And uh, this guy just helps you debuff them, so that's great. Now, 34 CT is incredibly high for a PvP rare recruit, but let's see what it does. It's going to target 3 enemies for 100% chance to halve stats for 20 seconds. Also, medium range, horizontal, for 3,000 fixed damage. And for the first 40 seconds, 3 Psy enemies, 30% CT delay. This is a pretty good special. Um, that's really, really crazy. The, the fact that Int now have access to Yamato, Moria, and now Ohm. 
three characters that have the ability to halve enemy stats, that's going to be very annoying to deal with. But then on top of that, he does do fixed damage, which is good. You know, 3,000 is very good. But it is in horizontal range, so a bit of a drawback. And then also, if you are against Psy specifically, you can delay their CT. That's really, really cool. So you can run, like, a full, like, anti-Psy team with, like, this character. Um, the PvP Rev Recruit uh, Conus also is, is another int character that's very anti-Psy. Uh, and kind of interestingly enough is that uh, they're both Skypean characters. That's actually very, very interesting so you know you can do something like that you this is a very usable unit in pvp uh the ct though is definitely what is warning me off like would you use this character or would you rather use a character like pvp smoker honestly you'd probably use both right uh, especially especially on an int team this is a good special though i mean really heavy debuffing the enemy just this is going to be really good against psi enemies if you're not against a psi enemy i don't really know how good this is going to be now there's actually one more pvp rare recruit that we have before we talk about the sugo fest exclusive and that is going to be the groggy monsters uh, otherwise known as like the foxy pirate characters this is a brand new unit that's debuting on global and japan at the same time we have a quick powerhouse fighter and their effects in pvp their passive will give quick teammates level six attack and level six speed and for the first 30 seconds you get quick attack level five as well so level 11 attack and level six speed for your quick units at the start of the fight that's pretty incredible actually it's a very good passive and then he's special on a 27 second t ct targets two enemies for 1.5 times attack but then he does it up to three times now i did clarify through looking other different specials that this means that it does like six hits of this damage right because it targets two enemies does the 1.5 times his attack but it does it three times so yeah it does like six hits of 1.5 times to various different characters on the enemy side of the field and the great thing about this is that they're all guaranteed to hit because it is a targeting special if it's a one that was in a range then yeah it has a chance to whiff but the fact that it does target it does mean that it's not going to miss ever that's incredible but then on top of that targets three enemies with a high attack for 80 percent chance paralysis for 20 seconds i think he's fine i think I think he's perfectly respectable not the most broken unit in pvp ever but i guess if you get enough attack value on him like his attack and his amount of damage that he can do is going to be pretty incredible i think so i'm not too sure right now how good he is but he has the potential definitely to be very very good but now we get to talk about the big daddy, which is Bartholomew Kuma. Now, the interesting thing about this is that, yes, this is a Sugo Fest exclusive character. Should I say a Pirate Rumble Sugo Fest exclusive character? You only can pull him on PvP Legend banners. So, we're actually going to talk about his actual kit because he is a legend. Let's see what he can actually do. Strength, Powerhouse Shooter, good class combination. Captain Ability will reduce all cooldowns by one at the start of the quest. Strength characters will get a five times boost until you land a non-perfect hit. 4.5 times otherwise so basically 4.5 captain but if you keep hitting your perfects it's a five times captain to your strength units strength units only uh boost the hp by 1.5 so that's great and then also damages all enemies for 100 times the damage received at the end of the turn basically like halloween laws captain effect you get reflect damage every turn and the crew cannot be blown away by an enemy attack kind of similar to Capone Crew, for example, right? Where they have that inbuilt captain effect where you cannot get any of your characters blown away. This character has that. So it's an interesting captain effect, but there are obviously some drawbacks in that it only boosts strength characters. And aside from like having really good health and also having the attack boost, I mean, minus one cooldown is kind of nice, but the reflect damage is really good. Like all of it seems good, but unfortunately there isn't enough to really push them over the edge into it being a really good character. And that's because the special special ability is a bit disappointing so the special ability 50 times the amount of accumulated damage received before the special is launched is dealt as damage to all enemies so it's kind of similar to v2 katakuri where the more damage you take when you launch the special it has the capacity to do lots of damage towards the enemy now i believe this caps at like 200,000 damage very similar to v2 katakuri but you know 10 million damage is crazy it's a lot of damage you can get from the special ability alone but that's that's it like you just get damage but then there is also an added effect of if your crew's max hp is sixty thousand or more then you get a 2.5 times strength color affinity boost for one turn otherwise it's only a 2.25 times color affinity boost now just as your crew's max hp it means that you can have like your max health be at like eighty thousand. even if you're at one hp you're still going to get it it just talks about whatever your max health capacity could possibly be 
that is what you know it's it's based off of right but again it's just damage and a color affinity boost that's all his special does uh and unfortunately he doesn't have a super type he doesn't have super class meaning that he can't heal in any capacity his captain effect also does not provide healing so the reflect damage that he provides while it's good it's not going to be as effective as a wano law or halloween law should i say because he has the super type to heal himself plus also halloween law has a special that can prevent him from dying which allows his reflect damage to be even more useful so i can see what they were trying to going with here but it just it just doesn't work for me it's just it's very very bizarre he also is he, he just immune to blindness if you used him as a sub that's actually kind of useful and may come up and also he can't be blown away so that's also pretty good but then also for his potential abilities he's got 200 additional attack that's pretty weak actually for a legend in rage usually it's around 300 so that's pretty weak he also has hunger which is all bizarre like i don't know why kuma has hunger out of all characters but he reduces hunger and also he's got barrier penetration which is good barrier penetration is one of the best potential abilities in the game so that's great that he has that so now we can actually talk about his pvp abilities so in pvp Kuma's passive is going to give your strength teammates level 5 attack and gives himself level 10 blow away percent up and every time he blows away an enemy up to three times he gives an additional level 3 attack so that means it can stack up to level 9 meaning that he can give level 14 attack to your strength characters via that passive alone and considering he has level 10 blow away percent essentially any time he does a normal attack he's going to be blowing them away granting more attack so it's a very good way for your strength units to be hit to just hit just way harder right it's a, it's a really really good passive actually now for kuma's special ability 32 ct is a little bit high but what it does is it does a large range two times his attack but then targets one enemy ignoring their defense and dealing two times attack to that character it's a pretty good specialist when you especially when you know take into account his passive that is enabling such high attack values being added to your characters and in a lot of cases by the time he gets his special active he would have already attacked maybe two times maybe three times and in a lot of cases that is probably going to blow away the enemy um so you're going to be getting a, a lot of attack value from that especially if you partner in um like final tap kid for example if you're partnering in maybe versus ace i don't know where he kind of squeezes in onto the strength team but this is a really powerful character that can enable your strength units to just hit way harder than they were already hitting before. Uh, what's he actually do? He actually evades special bind. That's kind of cool as well. You know, it's kind of niche, right? I think he's pretty good in PvP. In regular play, though, definitely missed the mark with that one. So with all of that, that is going to conclude this video today. Thank you very much for watching. And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But other than that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.